Open up our Bibles to 3 John 2. Am I hitting that or is that popping or is that something else? Okay. Everybody's looking at me like I'm crazy. So. The Martians aren't coming. Glory to God. You know, uh, 3 John 2, uh, of course, has been a really uh, one of my, if, you know, everybody's got favorite verses. This was the verse that I probably slept on. It was my pillow. It was my bedspread. It was my mattress. It was my car that I got into when I left the house. It was everything I did because it was my strength when things weren't strong. Amen. When uh, when the business was bad, when the, we didn't know how the bills were getting paid, when things weren't going good, this was the verse. This was the verse, and it's not the prosper and being health. It's that God wish above all things. This is God's desire for Dave. And if we can get a hold of these things, it'll change our lives. God didn't speak His Word for God. God never speaks without purpose, and we're His purpose. We're His purpose. When He speaks, when He spoke this world into existence, He knew what you and I would like. And He spoke for us. Amen? When he speaks and he puts his word in here, everything in here changes our life. I mean, no, God's doing good. Amen? This word is to change our life. It's to help us. It's to build us up. It's to take us higher than we've ever been before. It's to, it's to show us his love. It's to receive our health. Whatever, we, whatever you have need of, it's in here. He's already spoken it. Amen? And so, we just need to grab hold of it. Right? That's why, because how many in here have read the whole Bible? Well, we're going to quit studying it now? No, because just because we read it don't mean we got it. And if we read it 150,000 times, you still wouldn't have it all because it's infinite. It's eternal. It's the Word of God. And it's living, powerful, and active and it's always doing more. So when you think it's reached its end, it hasn't even come close. Because it doesn't have an end. Amen? Amen. Third John 2 says, Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health, even as your soul prospers. For I rejoice greatly when the brethren came and testified of the truth that is in you, even as you walk in the truth. I have no greater joy than to hear that my children walk in truth. How many have kids in here? How many does it bless whenever you hear God working in them? You, you hear that something that they received in their life has caused them to make a right decision. Something that they received through the Spirit of God in His Word has caused them to receive Christ as Savior. Amen? When that happens, you're happy, aren't you? You know what's going to happen because they live in your house. And it's, a, it's a, you know, like my mom said, you live in my house, you're going to be saved. Right. It wasn't optional in our house. She was going to believe until you got saved. Amen? But, you know, even recently, Ramsey was telling us, you know, she's gone off and she's about done with her first year of college. Glory to God. And she was telling us, she's, you know, we chose a particular college and, and we actually, you know, we looked and and prayed and believed God for the right place, for the right place for her to be. Why? Because there's only one place you're supposed to be walking in the truth, right? There's one place that she's, that there's a walk planned for Ramsey. Amen? And so she was telling Kim one day, she said, I'm glad that I went to the school I went to because I don't know that I would have made it had I chosen this other path. She was being quite honest with us. She was saying, I might have fallen away. I might have fallen away from Christ. I might have slipped back, drew back. She said, she said some of the things that I was listening to and doing were contrary to the Word of God. And because she ended up where she's ended up, she's actually stronger. Amen? And she's been able to be a blessing, and, God's, and God has increased her 
And, and I'm not saying everything that she's done is probably, she, you know what, she's in college. I don't hear everything she does now. <laughs> Guess what? She's a big girl. Right? right? Now dad's got to be a big boy because it's really hard not to get involved in her life. <laughs> you know, he's wanting to say, hey, what's going on? Come on, come on. You know? But I've got to trust what's in her. And if you're on the right path, walking the right way, and the truth is in you, then the truth will come forth. Amen? And so, I'm so glad and I rejoice greatly to hear my child is walking in the truth. Amen? And that's the way God is. He rejoices greatly when our walk is where it should be. Right? Because the truth is, you're healed. Right? The start of this chapter says, I wish above all things that you'd prosper and be in health. And then you're walking in the truth. Prosperity and, tr- and, and health must be part of your truth. Amen. Amen? Peace, joy, and love are part of your truth. Goodness, kindness, gentleness, they're part of your truth. They're, they're who you are. They're, they're how you walk. Amen? And that's, that's the path that God has us on. It's a walk. It's a walk of life. Amen? You know, last time I preached, we talked about making the most of every opportunity along your path. God presents opportunities. Well, I must be doing a series because we're going to talk about watch your step tonight. Amen? Watch your step. If you look in the Bible over and over again, he talks about not only where people walked, not even so much where they walked, how they walked. Right? Let's look at just a couple. A couple of really good ones in the Old Testament in Genesis 5.24. Enoch. You reckon Enoch was walking the right way? I reckon he was. It says, Enoch walked with God and he was not. He must have been so much on the right path that he, he just couldn't stay here anymore. He, he, he just went... And his path just went right on up. Why? Because God took him. Obviously, Enoch was in agreement with God. And those two began to walk, and they walked together. Amen? How many know Jesus and God walk perfectly together? Amen? They never disagree. They walk completely together. Amen? Enoch walked with God, and he was no more. How about Genesis 6-9? It says, These are the generations of Noah. Noah was a just man and perfect in his generations, and Noah walked with God. Just man, perfect in his generation, walked with God. Must be something to this walking with God. It's not just walking like this, it's how you're walking. Because how can two walk together, that's Amos 3.3 by the way, unless they be agreed. So what, what is Noah took some flack now. It's going to what? What's that called again? Rain? It, it, the earth's going to flood? Noah, you're nuts. For 120 years, there are people coming out saying, there's crazy Noah building that stinking whatever it is. I don't know what, what is an ark. We don't need arks. Every, Noah, you want to go? Hey, we're all going down here. going to have some fun. No, I can't. I got you got a what? Noah, it's never done this. What did he refuse to do? He refused to look at anything except what God said. Amen. He walked with God. They said, let's walk this way. He said, I'm going this way. Why? Because God's going that way. Amen. That's the way God's going. I'm walking the way of God. And Noah didn't veer off his path for one minute. He didn't let people talking bad about him. He didn't let people laughing at him. People say, well, how do you know what happened? He's building an ark for 120 years. <laughs> Be guaranteed these people are laughing at him. Yep. It ain't even raining. Yep. Right? Yep. He didn't veer off the path. Right? Yep. And God said, I want, want you to walk with me. So I'm going to make a way for all men to walk with me. And he sent his son Jesus, who died on a cross. Open your Bibles to 
Romans 6. He died for us, and He lived for us. And because He did, Romans 6, 4 says we got a new way to walk. It says, therefore, if we are buried with Him in baptism into death, that like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, just like He was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, He's saying we're just like Him. Huh? Is that what He's saying? I think that's what He's saying. Just like He was by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. In other words, God has made us a way where we don't have to walk the way of the world anymore. We don't have to do the things that the world does. We don't have to say the things the world says. We don't have to have the things the world has. Right? Why? We can walk in the truth. We can walk in this truth that's in 3 John 2. The truth is, we've been made free from these things. Right? And, and God made a way where we can walk in this newness of life. We can walk in this ability. Right? What did he say in uh, 2 Corinthians 5.17? You know, I'm reading you all the salvation verses, right? Why? Because your salvation's ongoing. Amen. Amen? Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. We don't have to have the old junk anymore. People say, well, you know, whatever's going on in the world, you've got to deal with it. No, you don't. You don't have to deal with it. Jesus dealt with it for you. He went to the beginning and to the end. Right? And, and He accomplished everything that would ever need to be accomplished in our lives. And because of Him, we are able to walk in this truth that it talks about in John 3. 3 John 2, or 3 John 4, actually. Amen? And this walk is not this kind of walk. This walk is how you live, and also many times where you live. Amen? Huh? <laughs> you guys going to stay? Stay with me. We'll get somewhere. God's going to help us. He has promised us that, and He will help us. And so we're walking in this newness of life. Amen? Amen? Ephesians 5. We've got a lot of scriptures. How many know the word's good? So now we're saved. We're walking in newness of life. And if that's all the scripture you had, would you know how to do it? No. But we've got lots of scripture. And God said, I make you my children. You're my kids now. Right? If you were somebody else's kids, you'd have to walk as their kids. But you're no longer a child of darkness. What's it say? Ephesians 5, 8 through 10 says, For we were sometimes darkness, but now we are light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. What's he saying? He's not, saying, he's not telling you how to walk. He's telling you who to be while you walk. He's saying, walk as my kids. In other words, it's not time anymore to walk like the world. It's not, and he, you know, people say, yeah, you don't want to get into all that sin. You don't want, no. No. If you're a child of the king, you should walk like a child of the king. And it's not just about not sinning. It's not, it, yes, you want to represent the Lord well, but you want to walk in health. You want to walk in victory. You want to walk in life. You want to walk in hope. You want to walk in peace. You want to walk in joy. These are things the world doesn't have. You know, people, people just imagine that the world has some form of hope. The world has no hope. Their tomorrow could be it for them. Right? Our tomorrow is not it. Our tomorrow is a beginning. Every new day is just another beginning for us of something good is going to happen to me. And if, you're, if your day today was bad, don't believe it for tomorrow. Something good's going to happen to you. Why? Because you're a child of the King. You are a child of light. Walk as a child of light. Walk as someone who has the light of God in your life. And has ability. So what God says is, I'm going to give you my ability. You're my kid. I'm going to give you my ability. 
So now you're in the earth, but you're no longer of the earth because you have His ability. You have now become supernatural. Right? Yeah, you may live in the natural, but you are supernatural because you have the God-given ability in you. You have His ability in you. He's your Father. He is your Father. And everything that He has put in you and has given you, you have to work with. Right? And so what's the devil say? So, well, I've got I to gotta confuse them. I can't have them working with that supernatural. I can't, I can't have them doing things like God. Oh, no. Yeah, that, that scares the devil. A Christian who will go out and act like a Christian, they're a scary, scary thing to the devil. Why? Because he has no power against them. He has zero power against them because their ability is God's ability. Amen? Amen? They have the grace of God in their life. Right? And, and, and this God-given ability is the ability to show God's true will in the earth. What's this? If you read on in that verse, it says, The fruit of the Spirit in all goodness and righteousness... For the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness and righteousness and truth, proving what is acceptable unto the Lord. What's he saying? Walk as children of light to prove what's acceptable unto the Lord. Why do you think the devil spent so much time trying to confuse us with religious... (laughs) I'm not going to say it that way. Why do you think that the devil spent so much time trying to mess this thing up? Hmm? Because if you learn who you are... And you let God be good to you over and over and over again. Every day, as good as He can get, He can be gooder. Because what you're doing is you're proving His will in the earth. Amen? Every time He does something in your life, you've proved His will in the earth. Not His will for Dave, because he's no respecter of persons. It doesn't matter how good he is to one person, he'll be just that good to someone else. Because, and as we walk, see, it's not, you're not walking for just for you anymore. You're proving out the will of God in the earth. So when somebody gets healed, it's not just, oh, wow, we should really be amazed. Why? Because it's the will of God in the earth. It's the acceptable will of God. He's accepted 1 Peter 2.24 as your healing. Yeah, and when we walk in our health, when we walk in, in, that, in that divine nature of health, and when we receive healing, whenever this sickness is going around here and this sickness is going over here, but yet we're staying well, we're proving the will of God in the earth as children of light. Because as children of light, that's His will for us. When, when the economy's bad and we're doing okay, you're proving the will of God in the earth. It's not because you're so great, it's because He's so great and He's your dad. <clears throat> Amen? And as we walk as children of light, we go where children of light go. Right? And we affect the things in those areas that we're to affect, and we're affected in those areas. And we're effective. Amen? So, the one thing we're going to do, if we continue on this walk, and we refuse to be tripped up, so we're walking as children of light. And the devil is saying, I cannot let them get to other people. I cannot let them prove the will of God in the earth, because people start seeing you're supposed to be well, they'll just be well all the time. All that new stuff that I got going, that I, you know, all those new names for all them new diseases, they won't even, they won't even care what I come out with because they're walking as children of light. They're proving the will of God everywhere they go. I can't have that. So I gotta mess with them. Right? Is the walk hard? It's not hard. Jesus said, my burden is easy, my yoke is light. Right? Why did Jesus come? He came to make our walk easy. Look at uh, Luke. Luke 3. <clears throat> John the Baptist was made with this was his this was his uh, what he was to do. And he and he prophesied that this is what would happen. He said every Luke 3:5 
and 6. It says, every valley shall be filled. How, how hard is it to walk across the filled valley? You know, I was walking a couple of weeks ago with Kim here in Branson. <laughs> I mean, no, that ain't so fun. The down part is okay. The up part, not so much. Right? Now, I'm thinking, let's take some dirt, and let's fill that in across there, and that wouldn't be nearly so hard to walk. That's what Jesus did. Huh? That, that valley of the shadow, shadow of death, it's filled in. <laughs> Jesus filled it in. You can walk through it all you want now, not even get tired on the uphill side. Glory to God. Now see, the other day I was walking in Florida. It wasn't hard at all. They ain't got no hills there. Just walk. It's just like this everywhere. Wasn't hard. I'll have to say I would get in better shape walking here than I would there. I guess their valleys have already been filled in. Every valley shall be filled in. Every mountain and hill shall be brought low. How hard is it to walk up a mountain that's been cut in half, been cut down to nothing? It's flat. What's he saying? I'm going to make your path smooth. I'm going to make it easy. He said, not only am I going to give you a way to walk, I'm going to make it for you. I'm going to lead you through it. I'm going to make it easy for you. I'm going to, br- I'm going to fill in the valleys. I'm going to cut down the mountains. In the rough places, I'm going to make those smooth. You can't even twist your ankle anymore on a rock. Because I'm going to take the rough places and make them smooth. Now, that's, that's walking as a child of light. What's he saying? If you'll stay on the path that Jesus created for you, in advance, before you got there, you won't even stub your toe. Because I've gotten rid of the rough places. You won't get tired because you ain't going to go uphill. You won't fall down and roll down to the bottom of the next hill like Jack and Jill. Right? He's made it easy. He's filled it all in. And He said, Here, here's where you got to walk. Let, let, me, let me show you. You walk where there ain't no mountains anymore and there ain't no valleys and there ain't no rocks. That's like Florida. There ain't no rocks there either. I was trying to find one to prop the door open the other day. I'm like, man, all I got to do is look down in Branson. <laughs> Florida, you got to go buy rocks. Man. You get on the asphalt there and you can walk as far as you want and never get tired until you just get tired. Amen. Amen. He's going to make the crooked places straight and the rough places smooth. When you come to those signs and they go like this, you know, on the road, he's just going to, he's going to take those and go like that. <laughs> right? It's like you wake up one morning and three people call you and you start seeing the road wind like this and, and you just say, Jesus, and he goes... And he straightens it out. That's what he does. Our way to walk is not a hard way to walk unless we get off the path we're walking. As we walk as children of light, we're in the light. Right? What's it, what's it say in Psalm 119, 105? Everybody knows this verse. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. When we're walking as children of light, we're walking in His Word, and His Word goes before us, and He is the Word who brought the mountains down and filled in the valleys and took the rocks out. He's the Word. And we're walking as children of light. And our path is easy. So, see, the devil couldn't mess it up that way. He's like, I tried to put mountains. I tried to put rocks. Jesus got rid of all that stuff. Tried to make it crooked. Jesus came, messed it all up for me. Amen? Amen. Glory to God. So we're walking in the light. And in Psalm, let's go to Psalm 26, 3. And we're walking in the truth. So the truth is light, right? Hmm? And his, and his word is good. 
And where you walk is where you're going to see. How many people walk like this? Usually, if you do, you run into something eventually. (laughs) Right? Because where you're looking is really where you're going. Huh? (laughs) You keep looking over at something else, that's where you're headed. (laughs) People say, well, I'm just going to look. I won't get involved in it, but I I just want to watch a little while. I'm telling you, what you're looking at is where you're heading. Amen? Amen? What, what did David say here as a psalmist? He said, he said uh, For your loving kindness is before my eyes, and I have walked in the truth. What's David looking at? Or, I'm, not, I'm not sure David wrote this one, but the psalmist, how about that? He said, I'm going to look at your loving kindness. What you bought, what, who you are, what you've got for me, your love for me. I'm going to look at it, and I'm going to walk in the truth. As we look at how, if we don't get our eyes off this, how much does God love me? That's it. That's your focus. Well, it doesn't matter what your need is, if you can believe how much God loves you. Yes, sir. Right? <laughs> People are looking at me like, well, what if He don't want you to have it? If your daddy loves you, there ain't nothing he ain't getting for you. It's how much does God love you? What, what, he was, what the psalmist was looking at before his eyes, he was keeping the love of God his focus. God's love for him and God's love through him. Therefore, he walked in the truth. When we, the first place we get off is when we question the love of God for us. Remember we talked about it several weeks ago when the people said, God, don't you, don't you care? Doesn't God care that we don't have any water? Sure, He can bring us into the Red Sea, but what about the water? Doesn't He care? There's the first devil's trap right there. There should be a sign up that says, Slippery when wet. <laughs> What's He going to try to do? Question the love of God for you. First thing He's going to try to do. Get you to question God's love for you. Because if He can get you to question that love, the next thing you question is your healing. The next thing you question is your prosperity. The next question you, you, quest, you have is His care for you. <clears throat> He's just got to get you to question that love. Right? right? Why? Because then you'll start looking at other things. Well, you know, I know God's over here, but that looks like one way. You know, and... I know somebody that believed all their life and they didn't get anything. And I know God must have loved them some and I'm not nearly as good as them. Don't question God's love. Every time you question God's love, read read John 3.16 and put your name in there. For God so loved Dave that He gave it all. There's your value. The richest being in all the universe gave everything for you. There ain't no one richer than God. I don't care how much money they got. They ain't richer than God. And He gave everything for you. There's your value. Never question it again. Don't allow the devil to talk you out of walking in the light as a child of light with that kind of junk. God loves you, therefore your life will go well. Every day when you wake up, you say, God loves me, my life will go well today. My life will go good. And and I don't care what the situation looks like. You say, I must be here because God loves me and He needs some love in this situation. Don't look at it like you've done something wrong. You ain't always in a bad situation because you did something wrong. Somebody might need help there. Because if you're in it, it's about to be won over. Because you brought victory with you. You're not, what, you're not getting in there and waiting for victory. You brought it. Amen? I'm not saying God puts bad things in our life. God does not. But He, he will send you through the fire. But He'll promise you not to burn, get, that you'll not get burned. Right? He'll send you through the flood, but He promises that it won't overtake you. Right? <clears throat> walk as children of light. Children of light, they don't even know the fire. Notice the fire, why? 
They've been through it a million times and they never burned them before. You know, Ramsey never asked us how much is in the checkbook before she asked for money. <laughs> you know why? She's never been without. She has never been without. People say, well, you ought to learn to go without. No, you ought not. I'm not glad that I learned to be without. I'm glad what I learned that I didn't like being without. But she don't ever come to us and say, ooh, I need a hundred, but what's in the checkbook, Dad? Do you got it? She says, hey, can you switch some money over into my account? <laughs> Why? The fire don't mean nothing to her. It doesn't mean anything to her. If you've been protected all your life, right? How many, how, you know, it's like a roller coaster. First time you you ride it, man, it's a little bit scary, and you, you know that you got. I don't like roller coasters, but right, you ride you ride it twice, it's still okay. By the two hundredth time, <laughs> why you've ridden it, you know the turns, you know the twist, you know the curve, you you don't you don't care. Right. What you've been there, it has no power over you. The fire has no power over a child of light. They can walk right through it and not be burned. Amen? Amen. Glory to God. God loves us. Satan ain't going to talk us out of it, is he? First sign, slippery when wet. Whenever you ever question the love of God. People say, well, yeah, he may love me, but maybe he's not happy with me. (laughs) He's happy with you every day. You know, we, me and Kim were talking today. Boy, Ramsey, I'm glad she's not here. She wouldn't like me tonight. <laughs> we were talking today. She said, and she, she came home, actually, but she didn't get here until late. She, you know, she said, I said, you know, I really like her. And Kim said, you know, I love her. I haven't always liked her. <laughs> <laughs> Parent, can, I, can I have parents? That are good? Yeah, my mom told me that before, too. <laughs> right? That love doesn't quit. And, and, and her feelings towards her didn't change. She may not have liked the actions she was taking at the time, but she didn't withhold her love because of it. That's right. Glory. Yes. Amen. God will never withhold His love. And He will, you know, He doesn't take things or hold things back from you to teach you a lesson. That, that's a worldly thing. That's, a, that's the world came up with that idea. That's not a God thing. He'll heal you, then tell you what you messed up. He'll get you out of your mess and then tell you why you got in it. Amen? Amen. He's a good father and he's way smarter than us. He doesn't need to offer you a Hershey bar to go to the bathroom. (laughs) Okay, how many parents have potty trained? (laughs) Sorry, I'll use something else. (laughs) We start them off that way though, don't we? First thing we ever teach him, oh, if you'll just do this for Daddy, I'll give you these M&M's. God would give you the M&M's and then teach you how to do it. Right. <laughs> Glory to God. <laughs> yeah. Must have been right. <laughs> Our eyes are going to take us where we're going. Amen? What we see, the vision of God that we put before us will keep our focus. If you envision God as anything but love, it's going to mess you up because His foundation is love. You have to start there. Amen? Never question the love of God. The Word of God cannot be separated from who God is, right? Look at Proverbs 4, verse 20. The devil's going to try and get our focus off some way. He says in verse 20, He says, My son, attend to my words, incline thine ears unto thy sayings. Let them not depart from thine eyes. Keep them in the midst of your heart. If you, if you let the love of God out of your eyes, you'll pull, it, it won't be in your heart. What's in your eyes is what's coming in your heart. How do, how do you keep the Word of God in your heart? Keep it in your eyes. How does it get there? 
Right? It's your focus. Not your physical eyes. The eyes of your spirit, right? This is how you see. Why do you think that the devil has spent so much time and spent so much effort making God look bad? Kim had a friend just just recently that that got in an argument with somebody at a Bible study. I used to do this weekly, by the way. (laughs) Because they prayed for this girl to be well in a a situation. I won't say the situation because I don't know that they'd want me to. And the and lady came up afterward and said, well, what if that's not God's will for her to be well? In church. This is what people believe, guys. The devil has spent hours and days and years and months. He spent time putting religious tradition and junk into people where their vision of God is so bad that they can't see the Word, let alone put it in their heart. Right? You can't deny God's love for you. And when you say it might not be His will to heal me, you can't say God loves me in the next sentence. People say, oh, sure you can. You know, maybe that was just His best plan. I don't think so. Permissive will at best. It's true. I mean, I know everybody here, but we've heard the goodness of God over and over again. Thank God for ministries like this one and so many others that preach and teach us that God's good and God's good and God's good and He loves you and He won't quit you and His desire for you is health and prosperity so that when we look at the Word, we see through good. Our eyes are right. we got good vision. We're not blurry at all. Amen? Amen. And we should be thankful for that. But as we walk in that light, we need to walk in it to a point where it proves God, not just so you can be well, so other people can see that God wants you well. And that they're a child just like you are, and He wants them well. Amen? Amen? Purpose. It says, attend to my words. Incline your ears to my saying. Don't let them depart from your eyes. Keep them in the midst of your heart for their life to those who find them and health to all your flesh. It's so powerful that it will bring you life and health. Amen? And what's he saying? If you, don't, if, you, if you already got a twisted vision of God, that verse means nothing. Because that's what the devil's trying to do. If you believe, well, it may be as well, it may not be, well then why keep his word before your eyes? Why put it in the midst of your heart? You don't know what's going to happen anyway. That's not okay. God's children are being ripped off. They're being ripped off of, of God's goodness in their life. Because they're looking like this. And they're going to run into a wall because they can't be on His path because they're not looking at Him. Amen? God's a good God with a good plan. And He doesn't have a bad plan for anybody. He has a good plan for everybody. Right? Keep Him in the midst of our heart. Life and health. (laughs) I'm hearing three things and talking one. Colossians 2. Our vision of God takes us, begins us on that direction as He's a loving, kind, good God with a good plan for our lives. That doesn't change. Our vision stays straight. We keep His Word in the midst of our heart. That is the truth. So when any other suggestion is made, it doesn't matter what they say. Uh, yeah, well, but you know the swine flu is coming around this year. That's, that's not for me. That's not truth for me. Truth for me is by whose stripes I were healed. Amen? Well, but the economy's in worse shape than it's ever been. That's not truth for me. Don't live as children of the world. Live as children of light. Walk as children of light. Children of light walk through the fire and it doesn't burn them. Amen? That's how we want to walk. 
How do we do that? <clears throat> Same way we receive Christ Jesus is what it says right here. Colossians 2 verse 6 says, As you, as you that have therefore received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk in Him. Interesting, it doesn't say walk like He walked. It says walk in Him. Right? That's like saying, I'm going to put on Christ and I'm going to walk in Him. I'm going to put myself in Him and I'm going to walk in Him. So when the devil sees you coming, who does he see? <laughs> he sees Christ. You know, what did I just tell you? Scariest thing to the devil is a, is a Christian who knows who they are. Because a Christian who knows who they are will walk in Christ. What will they be? They'll be what the rest of the verse says. It says, rooted and built up in Him, established in faith, as you have been taught, abounding in thanksgiving. So they ain't whining, and they're strong. It doesn't matter. See, that's what I'm telling you, like Ramsey. She don't, she don't look at the checkbook to see if we got the money. Because she she's walking, and her path's clear. There's no problems there. She don't see that we had a couple extra bills come up over here, and we had some extra payments due in there, and we had a car breakdown over here. She don't see that. She don't even ask. Why? All sufficient. Why? Because she doesn't, it's not that she trusts Dad. She trusts Dad serving God. Amen? And I don't want her to learn something else. I want, I want to be strong in faith. Well, I, don't want, I don't want to go in and say, I don't know how we're going to do it, guys. Hmm. Saying the economy's bad. You know, we got this going on over here. Ramsey wants to go to college this year. Whew. I don't know how we're going to make it. If your kids see you doing that, they believe you have to be that way. <laughs> you know, one thing I didn't do when my, when my business was bankrupt. I mean bankrupt. And I did, I'm not saying I filed bankruptcy. The bankers said, we don't know why you haven't. <laughs> you know who never knew it? Rams. Kim and Rams. Why? What am I going to do? Oh, Kim, I don't know how we're going to do it. <laughs> how, how are we going to make it this week? We, I don't even know if I'm going to get a paycheck. I don't know how we're going to make it. I've got to pay for this, or I can't get this. I've got to do this, or this won't happen. What are we going to do? What are we going to do, Kim? Hey, is Kim my source? She can't even believe with me now because everything I'm saying is trash. Glory to God, I was too stupid. <laughs> too simple one I don't know but thank God I didn't get her involved in it and no we didn't let Ramsey know when things weren't that great either of course by the time she was old enough to realize it wouldn't have mattered right children of light walk like everything's going to be alright all the time there is never a problem bigger than God that's why he said, walk as children of light. Children, there is nothing bigger than Dad. It doesn't matter what happens. It doesn't matter what's going on. Children, they will run to Dad. In the worst of times, walk as children of God. Amen? Rooted and built up in Him. Established in faith in Him. <clears throat> Excuse me. Abounding in thanksgiving. We should be thankful for who we are every day of our life. Thankful for what He's doing. If you find yourself, get thanksgiving victory out of the Word Supply. Listen to it again. If you find yourself being unthankful, if you find yourself whining at any point, you're being unthankful. Oh, but you don't know what's been going on, bro. If you find yourself whining at any point, you're being unthankful. Just the mere fact you have the breath to whine. Amen. Right? Yes, right? You have the breath to whine. Hello. Right? We don't, we're not whiners. Whining ain't ever moved God. So we're not going to be unthankful. If you can find yourself getting unthankful, here's the next sign. Beware of stupidity. Right? Yeah. Beware. Caution. 
Caution, wrong thinking. Hmm? We got we got hey, we're walking on a path. We got to stay on the path. You got to read the signs. That's a sign right there. It's right there on the side of the road. You're walking and he sees you getting unthankful. Caution, unthankfulness, caution. Amen. We're not unthankful. We're steadfast in the faith. Faith people are never unthankful. Why? They're always expecting to have what they're believing for. How can you be unthankful when it's going to show up at your door any moment now? May be there before you get home. Faith people are thankful people. Glory to God. So the devil's saying, oh, I can't get them unthankful. What am I going to do? Romans 8. I'm going to get them in condemnation. Romans 8. There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus. What are you doing? You're in Christ Jesus. You're walking in Him. If you're in Christ Jesus, you're walking in Him. And you're not walking after the flesh, but after the Spirit. And you can't be condemned. Oh, but you don't know what I've done, brother. Oh, I cussed twice today. Those people were driving in front of me and I just got so angry. You know, I just don't know if I'll ever be good enough to, have, to be one of these Christians. I, I just don't know that I'll ever make it. I, you know, I, I, I was flipping through the channels the other day, watched something I ought not. You know what? I, I, I used to drink and, and every now and then I look at a beer and I still want one. What is wrong with me? Well, a human? Uh, I guess I know what it is. You're like everyone else in the world. Yeah, but you don't know all the bad things, the horrible things I've done. It doesn't matter. That's the devil's trick to get you from walking in the Spirit. Walking in Christ. Walking as a child. You ever seen a child do something bad and spend weeks getting over it? Have you ever seen one do something bad and spend moments getting over it? If you have, talk to them because they're messed up right now and it's time to get rid of it. Children do not need psychologists. Right? They need love and an ice cream cone. Right? If you see a kid, man, and you can say, no, don't ever do that again. They go, okay. Right? And we don't want to spend our time telling them they're bad kids either. They're not bad kids. Why would you want to confess that over your kids? God confessed that we were good when we were His enemy. They're not bad kids, even if they did a bad thing. And that's what you, you're not a bad kid. I still hear you saying it, but you don't know. Yeah, I don't need to know. You ain't done nothing bigger than Jesus. And you ain't never gonna. And there's no condemnation of those who are in Christ. So I don't know if I'm good enough. You're good enough. You were made good enough by Him. You were made with His goodness to be good enough, not your own. You can't be good enough on your own. You got His good. Right? So when somebody says, are you good? You say, yeah, I've got it right here. I'm good. Yeah, but what about when you did this? Doesn't matter. I got good. What about this? I got good. What about that? I got good. Amen? We got good. We were made good. It wasn't something we did. We walk in newness of life. What is that newness? You're now good. That's way newer than what you were before because you weren't good before. The best unsaved person is still not good. You're saying, well, they're a really good person. They may be good, but they ain't God good. God's got a good or good for them. Amen? They can be God good. <laughs> Condemnation. <laughs> you need your daily affirmation like on, 
<laughs> okay, Saturday Night Live. You guys used to watch it. Just don't tell me you didn't. I don't care if you're that cool or not. I'm good enough, I'm smart enough, and doggone it, people like me. <laughs> See, we don't need to do that. We say, Jesus made me good enough. He's, he's given me wisdom. And He likes me. Amen? And I'll never be condemned again. <laughs> yeah, you guys watched it. You know you did. You act like you didn't. Say, so that day, man, he, he watched Saturday Night Live. But... Whew, thank God for the blood. Glory to God. Condemnation. Warning sign, crooked path. Warning sign, if you see condemnation coming anywhere near you, there's a sign that says, crooked path, crooked path, crooked path. And you look at Jesus and He goes, and He jerks the slack right out of the crooked path because you ain't condemned ever, ever, ever again. And if you mess up, guess what? You have an advocate with the Father. Glory to God. You've got, you got an advocate on staff for you. If you mess up, He goes before the Father on your behalf. He says, that one's mine. And God says, yes, it is. Glory to God. No more condemnation. It's a crooked path. Beware, crooked path. <laughs> There's a, I've been on the planes a lot the last, last few months, and when they're doing their... You, I can actually hear the cockpit when I'm in the... I'm talking about commercial planes. And they always test this thing. It says, warning, 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 wind shear ahead. Warning, warning. Anybody ever heard that when you're on a commercial plane? That's what, that, that's, what, that's what God's doing whenever you're thinking of being condemned. He's saying, warning, warning, warning. Condemnation ahead. Warning, warning, warning. <clears throat> Walk as a child. Child don't get condemned. Did you do that? Yeah. That's not okay. Yes, sir. Okay, let's not do it again. Yes, sir. Can we play now? <laughs> you ground them. And they'll go play in the front yard. <laughs> Kids don't get it. They, they, don't, they don't get this condemnation thing. You ever see one sitting in the corner sucking his thumb for over five, ten minutes? Check it out. <laughs> Warning, crooked path. No more condemnation for us. We walk in the Spirit. We walk as children of light. Galatians 5. Verse 15. It says, But if you bite... And devour one another. Take heed that ye be not consumed of one another. This I say then. Walk in the Spirit, and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. I guess our flesh likes to talk bad about people. I don't really like to talk bad about the people. That's good. You mean you're in the Spirit. Because your flesh does like to talk bad. It likes to devour and bite one another. It's what the, the Word of God says that, not the Word of Dave. Right? Right? You find yourself talking about people and say, well, I just want you to pray. I'm not telling you for any other reason <laughs> except I want you to pray. But Dave, I saw him over this. <laughs> now, you didn't want them to pray. You wanted to talk. You find yourself getting upset with people, getting offended with people, getting mad, and then doing something mean because of it. Warning. Warning. Hear that warning, because he's trying to talk you out of your walk. Because that pulls you right off the path. Children don't learn that. You have to teach kids to do that. Kids have to be taught. Why? How do they learn? Listening to their parents. Right? Getting offended. <laughs> Getting offended. You know what? The biggest change in our life, the biggest newness that I think should happen 
is we should be the one in the restaurant that when you get the wrong order, you just eat it. Or throw it away. The biggest newness would be when somebody didn't do you the greatest job, you didn't tell someone else about it, you just let it go. People say, well, I didn't get what I paid for. I demand my rights. Well, you had the right to go to hell at one time. Do you demand that one too? We don't need our rights. We need to love unconditionally and without favoritism. And, and, and not just to get our way. People that are offended didn't get their way. I've been offended, I know. You know why I was offended? I didn't get my way. What if you never got your way? Would you be offended forever? Jesus came down and didn't get His way, and didn't get His way, and didn't get His way, and went to hell and didn't get His way, and then we won because He didn't get His way. And then he got his way. Because he didn't have to have his way. Right? What if he just said, I ain't got to die for these people. They ain't doing nothing but talk bad about me, spit on me, and beat me. Could have. Offense is a deterrent to your walk. You will not follow as a child of light, offended. People that are offended, leave their path. Right? People, people that got to have their way, that have to be right. Well, you don't know what they did to me. It doesn't matter what they did to you. You don't have to have your rights. But I ordered green carpet and I got beige. But it doesn't match in my house. That's a tough one, isn't it? Yes, sir. (laughs) Pray that the people will see it and recognize it on their own. (laughs) Pray for a way to show them where it won't hurt somebody. Pray for a way for that business to come out of it ahead. Don't just get your way. It's not worth it. It's, is it worth somebody's soul for you to have green carpet instead of beige? I reckon I could live with green carpet or however I said it forever. If it caused somebody, if it didn't, if it didn't keep somebody from going to church, people think Christians are mean. Because you know what Brother Moore said, right? Some some Christians are as mean as they can be, and they'll find five scriptures to back up why they can be mean to you. <clears throat> it's not okay. Love's not mean. Kids are not mean until we teach them how to be. Right? Children of God are not mean. Because God's not mean. And all the characteristics of a child of God are God's characteristics. And God's not mean. And love never demands its own way. We'll move on. Warning. Warning. You feel yourself talking about somebody? Watch your step. Rough road. Rocks ahead. Watch your step. Rough road. Rocks ahead. The minute you see yourself talking, the minute you hear yourself, the minute you feel that... You know how you feel when somebody offended you? <laughs> Everybody knows. It like comes up from your feet and goes to your head. <laughs> right? And you want to be offended. And that's the time to say... I'm going to go. It'll all be okay. Right? (laughs) Warning. Warning. Wind shear ahead. (laughs) If you don't do these things, you'll walk in the Spirit and you won't fulfill the lust of the flesh. we, We have an innate thing in our flesh that it wants to be right and it wants to have its way. Right? Starts when you're a baby. What? They cry and wake you up because they want to eat in the middle of the night. Right? Guess what? They would live just fine if they slept for a couple more hours and ate when you did. But they don't care. 
Yeah. Right? We care about others because we're on the path. We're walking in the light. Glory to God. Galatians 5. This is a big one. Galatians 5, verse 6. It says, For in in Jesus Christ neither circumcision availeth anything nor uncircumcision, but faith which works by love. You did run well. Who did hinder you? That you should not obey the truth. What are you saying? They're not walking in the truth anymore. Tradition, religious tradition, is the biggest deterrent from walking as a child of the light. Religious tradi- tradition. Refusing to believe the Word of God as it's, as it's written and changing it to match your bad experience or lack of experience. Amen? That will pull you off the path that will take you away from walking as a child of light right what what did paul say said you were doing so well you you were running a great race who hindered you in other words who who confused you what what scripture did they use what did they do to get you off the path why what were they were trying to tell him that you know if you if you're saved but you're not circumcised you should be Gosh, I wouldn't have liked that law at all. If I was the... Never mind. (laughs) We'll go away from that. The religious tradition. Right? We don't want want to get involved in it. It is... There should be a huge sign. Every time you hear something or you're going through something and they say, well, but maybe it's God's will for your life that bad things happen. Maybe you didn't do something right. Maybe this, maybe that. Maybe is not in the Bible. It doesn't say, by whose stripes maybe you'll be healed. Right? These are all suggestions and ideas and plans of other men that, that, to try to explain why they didn't receive what the Word said. When it would have been easier to say, I don't know why, but God loves me and I'm going to get it. Amen. People say, well, I need to know. You don't need to know. <laughs> all you need to know is the Word is truth. Right? I've seen people study themselves right out of the goodness of God. They'll go and find ten scriptures as to why they didn't receive from God. Well, you guys are quiet. Look at Colossians 2, verse 8. It says, Beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit after the traditions of men, after the rudiments of the world, and not after Christ. What's he saying? Watch out for other people's opinions. Don't go looking for reason. If something doesn't happen, go to God. And then if he tells you, listen. If he doesn't, say, well, I'll go ahead and take that now. Right? He's the good God. He's not withholding His promises from you. He's not withholding anything from you. These questions are withholding things from you. This, it, when we begin to listen to somebody's idea rather than the Word of God, we are questioning God or changing or adding to His Word. I don't understand everything that's happened in my own life, but I know what the Word says. And I'm not going to change or add to it because I have a lack of understanding. The Word says He heals. That's why I believe it, not because I got healed. The Word says, I wish above all things that you prosper and be in health, even as your soul prospers. I believe that, not because I prosper. I believed it when I didn't prosper, because I knew it was true. Why? It's God's Word. I'm not going to believe something else. I'm not going to be chased off my path by a lie that looks good. 
and exchange the truth of God for a lie. Amen? Amen? That pulls us off the path, and we cannot prove the true will of God in the earth, and that's why the devil wants it to happen. Because now, who knows what God's true will is? It's so confused. Sometimes he heals, sometimes he doesn't. Some Christians have, are taken care of, some aren't. They would throw a parent in jail if they had ten kids and treated five of them good and five of them like trash. That's right. They wouldn't go to the five good ones and say, well, they treat you good, so I guess that's okay. No, they'd go to the five bad ones and they'd take them away and take all ten kids away and put you in jail. We're not trading. We're going to believe God's Word. We're going to be children of light. And when God says it, that's what's true. We're not believing it for any other reason than God said it. We walk in the truth. Amen? Amen. Slippery road. Beware. Slippery when wet. Don't look at those traditions of man. Huh? We don't want to look at them. Hebrews 6. Six twelve. Here's one that nobody in here ever does. <laughs> but this is a lot of reason why people don't receive from God. It says that you be not slothful. You know what? There are people who won't get into His Word, who won't find out who they are, who will never believe, who will never try. They'll die someday and go to heaven. But they'll never have the goodness of God here in the earth. Because they're just not going to get they're just not going to seek it out. People say, well, it tells them right there not to be slothful. That you know what? It tells me not to be slothful and mowing my lawn too, probably, but I'm not going to. <laughs> There's just some things people aren't going to do, and it says be not slothful. There had to be a reason he put it in there because people must be slothful or or they must have an ability to be slothful. What's he say to do instead of that? He said, be followers of who? He gives us, an, he gives, now, now he's going on, he's saying, don't go this way and don't do it this way because it'll take you off the path. Follow, in other words, look at the path. Follow those who through faith and patience inherit it. Follow, don't be slothful, but followers of those who through faith and patience inherited the promise. In other words, don't look at what we were just looking at, all these people who were explaining away God's Word. Look at these who believed God's Word and persevered and stayed on the path and believed His Word and at the end received the promise because they stayed on the path. Amen? That's what we're going to do. Is that what we're going to do? And we're not going to be slothful. We're going to get in the Word of God. We're going to find out what it says. We're going to find out who we are, where we're supposed to walk, how we're supposed to walk, who we're supposed to see, what we're supposed to do. Amen? We're not going to settle for, well, I'm going to heaven someday. Going to heaven someday will not prove the will of God in the earth. It will prove the will of God in heaven when you get to heaven someday. <laughs> People say, well, I don't know if they'll go to heaven. You know what? You're going to see people in heaven you didn't think would ever be there. Ephesians 2, verse 9. <clears throat> Not of works. Warning, warning, works mentality, works mentality. You can't get the free gift. By working. Why? It's a free gift. You can't work for a free gift. Right? If you, go, if you go up to the Word Supply after service today and you say, can I have that tape series? I'll work behind the counter. There's nothing to do. Why? Right, because it's free. Yeah. Well, but I'll help you. You can't work for it. It's free. Amen. We can either give it to you or you... <laughs> That's it. There's no other option. Right. And that's kind of the way it is with God. People are saying, i got to do something to have all this. Works mentality. It will take you off the path because you'll get busy trying to do things to receive what God has already given you. Amen? Warning. 
Warning. High place. Make smooth. <laughs> rocks. Rocks ahead. Curvy roads. Warning. We're not going to get caught up in that works mentality. It says not of works, lest any man should boast. Why? What do they do? They get prideful. You ever heard somebody say, look what I did with my faith? Mm -mm. You didn't do nothing with your faith. (laughs) Yeah, no. You didn't do nothing with your faith. God gave you the faith. You believed in Him and His goodness and His love. He gave you the ability. He made it happen. He did everything. All you did was believe in how good He was. Not of works, lest any man should boast. Let's go ahead and read the rest of this. I'll tell you what, throw it up in the Amplified, verse, verse 9, and then we'll go to verse 10. <clears throat> it says, not, not because of works, not the fulfillment of the law's demands, lest any man should boast. It is not the result of what anyone can possibly do. So no one can take pride, in him, pride himself in it or take glory to himself. Verse 10. For we are God's own handiwork, His workmanship, recreated in Christ Jesus, born anew, that we may do those good works which God predestined, planned beforehand for us, taking paths which He prepared ahead of time, glory to God, that we should walk in them, living the good life which He prearranged and made ready for us to live. And this all started with not of works. You reckon a works mentality could keep you out of that right there? Yeah. Why? Because it's pride. God can't work past pride. Warning. Pride alert. Pride alert. Pride alert. Anybody? See, condemnation's not much different. It says, well, I've done all this. I can't have that. What God, all you're doing is the opposite of that, saying, I ain't done nothing. Or I've done everything. I should be able to have it. I've got to do something so I can get it. You don't got to do nothing. You do have to do one thing. You've got to accept Jesus Christ as Lord of your life. That, that's, that's your part. Give Him you and take Him. What a trade. <laughs> you get everything and give them nothing. Glory to God. Not of works. Not of works because we're God's own handiwork. We're made by Him. We're made from Him and for Him. Everything we do, everything that we do do in this life, He prearranged it. It's like, it's like <clears throat> going to a ball game, you've already won. Right? You're coming out on the winning side. It doesn't matter. that You can play as long as you need to, you win. It doesn't matter if the score is 20 to nothing in the bottom of the ninth. Guess what? Get excited because you're getting ready to score 21 runs. Why? It's already predestined for you. Victory is ours. We're not trying to achieve it. We're believing it and having it. Doesn't matter what it looks like. You're going to win. As dark as it gets for you, look up, redemption draweth nigh. Amen? Glory to God. Pride. What's it say, Proverbs 16? Pride goes before destruction and a haughty spirit before a fall. Pride goes before destruction and a haughty spirit before a fall. So if you're you're walking in pride, you're walking towards destruction and you're about to trip. Right? So why would the devil want to get you into works mentality? It's pride. He knows he can trip you up. He's got to get us to fall. He's got to get us to quit. We're going to affect somebody's life if we keep believing and walking as children of the light. We're going, we're going to lead people to Christ. It's going to happen. Amen? What does it say in Micah 6, 8? Here's what God requires. He says, I don't want you walking walk in pride. He says, do it this way. He said, I have showed thee, O man, what is good, and what doth the Lord require of thee, to do justly, to love mercy, and to walk humbly. 
That's our part. Don't judge. Love mercy. Do the right things. Love mercy. Right? And walk humbly. Don't take credit. Right? You're not good because of you. You're good because of Him. When somebody says, why are you so good? You say, Jesus. They say, why is everything good happening for you, Jesus? What's going to happen to you tomorrow, Jesus? How do you, how can you be so sure, Jesus? Glory to God. <laughs> Isaiah 40. We're about to wrap up. Two more verses. Maybe three. 40.31 Weariness will cause you to faint. So God knew on the path weariness would cause you to faint. So He put fuel stops. Right? You see the sign. Fuel stop ahead. What's a fuel stop? Serving the Lord. Serving the Lord. You want to get strong? You want to refuel? You want to restore? You want to regenerate? Serve God. Don't search the Scriptures for your answers. Serve God. Serve God. What's it say? They that wait upon the Lord will renew their strength. They shall mount up on wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Yes. Glory to God. That's, it was fuel stop, walking on your path. Fuel stop, fuel stop. Don't get weary. Don't get weary. Get your fuel. Serve God. Amen. And a lot of people say, oh, I've got to get in the Word. I've got to get strong. You've got to serve God. Wait upon the Lord. Okay? If you're going to get in the Word, are you going to get in it for your, because you've got a problem? Or are you going to get in it because you want to know more about God and you love Him? Because I know what I did. I got in the Word because I had a lot of problems. <laughs> now, if you can get in the Word just because you love Him and you just want to know more about Him, that's waiting on the Lord. Serve the Lord. Get out and do something for someone else. You've got a problem in your life? Go do something for somebody else. Find somebody with a bigger problem. Oh, but you don't know. My problem's huge. Someone has a bigger problem. Right? Somebody somewhere has a bigger problem. Find them. Help them. You want, you want, what makes you stronger than that? Have you ever helped somebody and you knew you truly helped them and God used you to bring them up? Did that not make you strong? That's your strength. It's not, it's not getting in the Word of God and finding out why you messed up or finding out what you can do about your problem. It's finding out what you can do for someone else. <clears throat> people who love the Lord love people. You want to you be strong? Wait on the Lord. Serve the Lord. Amen? Make your path straight. You're not going to faint now, right? We're not fainting. Ephesians 4. Verse 1 says, I therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you that you walk worthy of the vocation wherewith you were called, with all lowliness and meekness, long suffering, forbearing with one another in love, enduring to keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. What's he saying here? Straight ahead, boys, straight ahead. Walk in love, straight ahead. Endure, don't judge, suffer long. Right? Don't give up on people. Endeavor to keep the unity of the peace. Go back to the verse before that one. Lowliness and meekness. Don't think too highly of yourself. Straight ahead. Straight ahead. You're on the path. You're on the path. You're walking in the light. You're walking in the light. Lowliness, meekness, long-suffering. Forbearing one another. Anytime you see in love, you're in the right place. If you're in love, you're in the right place and you're going the right direction. Be guaranteed. It doesn't matter how it feels because sometimes it don't feel right. What do you mean, give them all my money? But I got this bill due. What do you mean, give them all my money? What, what do you mean, give, my, give them my car? What do you mean, help them? What, look what they did to me. When you're in love, you're in the right place and you're walking the right direction and you're forbearing one another. And he, he wouldn't have said you would have had to forbear if there wasn't going to be something hard about it. 
Forbear doesn't even sound like an easy word. Does it? No, it doesn't sound like an easy word. No, because you're going to have to forbear one another in love. He puts these words like lowliness, meekness, and long-suffering, and none of those sound fun. Because they're the, they're, they are the opposite of the lust of the flesh. Right? And God says, you want to be on the right path? You want to walk worthy of the vocation you were called? Do these things. Do these things straight ahead. This is straight ahead. The path straight. Look right before you. This is your, this is your goal. Amen? Forbearing one another in love. Ephesians 5, and we'll close. <clears throat> Verse 1, be ye therefore followers of God. He just makes it simple. He just says, let's quit all the chit-chat. Followers of those who through faith and patience, that's great, do that. Followers of this. But this is make it real simple. Be followers of God. You know, you want to be on the right path? Follow God as children. As children follow... Follow God as children. Children of the light. Follow God as as His children. Follow God. And then it says, And walk in love as Christ has loved us and has given Himself as an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet-smelling savor. What's he saying? Give yourself. You want to be on the right path? Walk in love. Give yourself daily. (laughs) Nobody likes this. This is the path, guys. This is walking of children of life. This proves the will of God in the earth. As we walk as children of light, as children of God, followers of God, we're following Him. We're, we're going on a path that He's predestined for us to have. It's the good life. What is the good life? Helping others, loving others, doing for others. What's the good life? Giving yourself unselfishly for others. What's the good life? Helping people. That's the good life. The good life isn't prospering so you can have everything you ever wanted. The good life is prospering so you can do for everyone everything you ever wanted to do. That's the good life. That's the life He predestined for us to have. Jesus walked this this world and He walked through it for everyone else but Him. And He didn't talk about His money problems. He didn't worry about what was going to happen to Him the next day. He he went everywhere He went. He healed and He taught and and He did good things. And that's what He did. And if He did it following God, then that's our plan. Everywhere we go, good things should be happening. Right? Walking in love. Following God, walk in love. Follow God, walk in love. Follow God, walk in love. We got all the warning signs. Warning. Backbiter. (laughs) Warning. Religious tradition. Warning. He's got all kinds of warnings. But he's got the way. This is the way. Walk in it. Walk in love. Hallelujah. Can we do that? Stand to your feet.